Good evening, friends. This is Dolan TV. Glad to have you aboard as we get set up for the third to last Edmonton Oilers game of the 23-24 season. As much as it seems crazy to say, this Edmonton Oilers year is just about done uh, for the regular season portion anyway. And of course, that will finish off with the San Jose Sharks, the Colorado Avalanche, and yes, indeed, as well, the Arizona Coyotes here this season, the last time playing the Arizona Coyotes right at the very end of the season. So it'll be interesting now to see obviously what Mullet Arena looks like when we go in there on, well, later this week. I don't even know what day of the week it is. It's been a heck of a weekend and obviously a great time uh, celebrating a big milestone in one of my buddies' um, well, lives right now, let's just say. So friends, we're just about there to get things set up for the Sharks and of course the Edmonton Oilers. That said though, Montreal, Detroit has to uh, finish up first for us and Detroit trying to cling on for dear life in the playoff race, need to find a way to win this hockey game down 4-2. As we get to the chat here, friends, we'll get things fired up nice and early this evening. Got plenty of time to get things going. I do need a drink, however, running up and down the stairs as much as I have already is gonna drive me nuts. But, Avery, welcome aboard. Doe, welcome aboard. Alyssa, Al oh sorry, Allison, welcome aboard. Uh, David, welcome aboard. Mike, welcome aboard. And uh, Peter, welcome in, and Matt as well. So that is the chat for right now as we get things um, one going right now. We're just about set up for this Oilers and uh, Shark uh, Sharks matchup. But as we're going, friends, it'll be a rather quiet, uh, quiet start to this one. Obviously, I think Connor McDavid's in the lineup from everything I've kind of figured out about this hockey game tonight. Other than that, I really kind of missed the whole pregame portion. It's been kind of one of those uh, days where all of a sudden you look down at the clock at work and it's 2.30 in the afternoon and it's like, oh crap, that's uh, that's gone by quick. Especially when I hopped in the truck and went off on the road at about 8.30 in the morning. So as we're currently sitting, friends, it's 4-2 Montreal and Detroit. We'll get things fired up with, of course, what we need to know about tonight's game. Stuart Skinner presumably will get his last start of the season here, I'd assume anyway, based on uh, you got the Coyotes and Avalanche left. And you probably want Skinner nice and rested for playoff time. So he might get the start against Colorado if still first is on the line. But <clears throat> overall, I doubt that even myself. So I don't know if anyone said what the plan is. But Stuart Skinner at 35 wins has achieved a 35-win season. He's earned some time off and obviously had a pretty stellar year so far. Uh, Cooley will get the start for the San Jose Sharks. It's crazy. Michael Granlin has the most points for the San Jose Sharks this season at 58. Uh, Fabian Zetterland has 22 goals and obviously Granlin has 46 assists. Mackenzie Blackwood has most of the wins for the San Jose Sharks this year, more than half of them anyway, at 10. So it's been a year in San Jose and it's about to finally wrap up for those poor guys. So we'll see what happens here in this Oilers game. Obviously losing this one isn't necessarily going to be as heartbreaking as the one that did in Jay Woodcroft way back at the start of the year there. So thankfully for us, we should be uh, ready for a lot more excitement rather than disappointment, unlike the start of the year where things just really did not go our way much at all when it comes down to things for the Edmonton Oilers. And all of a sudden, here we are at this juncture of the season where, well, we're on pace to at least have home ice in the first round, if not throughout the, uh, I guess, throughout the, Second round, if a wild card team were to win, I think that's how that would work. So I'm not 100% sure, but the Oilers at least have home ice in round one and we'll enjoy that for the time being as we are about to see Rogers' plays come alive for another playoff year yet again. But as we're going here, um, yeah, nothing nothing else that we can, uh, nothing else we can really figure out from things today. So. Obviously, Connor McDavid's back on the ice for the Oilers tonight. That is your big storyline for this one. So um, we'll see what happens here for the Oilers as we go along for the ride as we continue to roll on this evening, friends, as uh, I don't think there is anything else really to report for this one. The fan appreciation night buckets are out in full force. So I guess the uh, Oilers did folding buckets for fan appreciation night that's exciting to see i'm sure we'll see that, a lot of that in the crowd tonight good promotion 
and uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that we can really uh, really say here for this one this evening. Detroit's just scored this hockey game, and I don't know how far I'm going to go tonight, um, just simply because I did not sleep very well at all last night. It was kind of one of those weird ones where uh, I don't know if the outside temperature was just screwing with the house or what, but didn't quite uh, didn't quite sleep quite right. David, thank you so much for the super chat to get things started here early on on the stream. And uh, Allison, when it comes down to it, will I be going to a playoff game this year? I've said there's only one playoff game I'm interested in going in to this year. Obviously, if I got offered free tickets, maybe a different story. But this year, I want the cup clinching game at home. If we have that opportunity, I'll be there no matter what. Wouldn't miss that for the world. But other than that, as it currently stands, I have no plans simply because... A, I haven't been offered any tickets, and B, I don't feel like uh, really missing out on what the prime time of the season is here on the channel, I guess, to say is this is this the big months. This is kind of where things took off last year as well to some degree, so excited to hopefully see the uh, same situation here on the channel as we go through the playoffs this year. So now uh, that said, anything is subject to change. You know, with me, every time... Uh, Something will pop up and I will go on some random adventure, but at current it looks like we'll just uh, do the same old thing we did last year, except for miss a couple less games, hopefully, and uh, have a good time here calling some Edmonton Oilers playoff hockey. Is Yeah, it's uh, literally just a week away, it seems, so the Oilers, yeah, I guess Monday, April 22nd is when we are looking to get our playoffs started if we're the Edmonton Oilers against the LA Kings, so... Plenty to be decided yet between uh, those two teams, it would seem, once more. I think there is still a possibility Vegas takes a spot, but I'm not 100% sure if Vegas is going to take it or not. I think I think Edmonton's going to lock into a first-round matchup for the third straight year against L.A. It's going to be a great, beautiful, glorious matchup, and then all of a sudden take us through into the second round against either Vegas again or against the uh, Vancouver Canucks and then see truly what this team is made of because I don't think... LA, yeah, I know third time's the charm, and I am concerned about that, but I, I fully feel that uh, the Edmonton Oilers have this in the bag if they face LA again in the first round, so I don't think there's much else to really analyze on that round, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here throughout the first few rounds. Alan, welcome aboard, and uh, Peter, yes, with an Oilers loss, the Canucks win the division, so the Oilers have to win out, and basically the Canucks have to lose out the rest of the way for the Oilers to be able to get first place in the division. So very unlikely that the division comes to the Edmonton Oilers. But again, uh, there is still that possibility and there's still the possibility we face the Vegas Golden Knights. So I guess we'll see what happens. But assume kind of what's going to happen here is pretty simple. LA Kings, third straight year in the first round. Here's Detroit still trying to mix it up with Montreal and get that two points to stay alive in the standings and both teams kind of just jumping around on the puck right now not really much uh happening here so far in this third period Detroit did score to make it 4-3 so interesting to see I've got a diehard Wings fan at work that uh would love to see this one tie up and then go to overtime and be a Wings thriller winner so here's an opportunity for them nope they're gonna miss that one so um Division titles and home ice mean nothing in the playoffs, Peter. That's just it, right? Is It's a lot about who comes in the healthiest, who comes in the most ready, and who comes in ready to win at the most critical moment of each series. And I think over the years you've seen some teams do that. The Oilers did that in several uh, playoff series. I think all three to get them to the Stanley Cup final, if I remember correct, against the uh, Carolina Hurricanes in 5 6 That was a lot of grit, sweat, blood, and tears that the Oilers kind of withstood to be able to get to that point and obviously just falling short against the Carolina Hurricanes in the later stages of that series. That's still a tough, raw heartbreaker for me, but we'll see if we have our own heartbreaker, our own triumph again this year for the Oilers against whoever they may face in the cup final if they so do make it that far. So, Purple, welcome aboard. As we are just about here for this evening's game now. It's 726. Obviously Monday night hockey, so you gotta finish up Detroit and Montreal still, but um 
do, do, do. I don't think there's anything else to really mention here on this one, this, uh, this early pregame stuff. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing really else to really mention, so. Oh, excuse me there, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting tonight to kind of see the compete level from the Oilers. Obviously, I think you're going to see Connor McDavid come out and very well try and uh, dummy the San Jose Sharks the best he can to pick up that assist, right? Probably a lot of trying to feed Hyman and dry settle to try and get that 100th assist this season. And I think that's realistically from everybody's understanding. The only reason Connor McDavid is actually playing tonight is simply because he would be trying to get that 100th assist and then likely sit out the last two games of the year. I've heard some rumors that there might be already some guys hanging out in town waiting to get in the Oilers lineup here later in the week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the names might not shock you too much as uh, they've been names regularly on this Oilers team over the past two years, but it be interesting, of course, to see uh, who, if anybody, the Oilers call up here to fill gaps over the next few games as they try to rest some guys. I know Stauffer and Mac T were some points about making sure you rest at home against Colorado simply because right the rant and hit you don't want any retribution coming back your way and you also want to make sure uh, that Ekholm gets a break at some point and is able to sit back relax and uh, go back and get rested for the playoffs to some degree as well just take a trip with the boys and come back ready for game one of the playoffs here in Edmonton on Monday so see what happens but yeah that's uh that's where we're sitting right now friends is Peter's got the lowly 74-75 Capitals, 8-67-5 back in the day. Uh, San Jose is not really that far ahead of them, realistically speaking, by the modern NHL measure. What They've got 19 wins this year, so let's see what, uh, see what San Jose can do next year, I guess. They're in for a tough little leg here over the next few years, obviously trying to build back from having some good pieces on the roster to now not really having any pieces at all. So uh, they've got some good young talent. They've got some good uh, good picks as well coming up, but tough part for them right now is definitely figuring out how to put it all together and figure out how to piece together an actual winning hockey team, unlike Ottawa, unlike Montreal, unlike uh, Buffalo have done over the past few years. Is It's been tough, and you'd like to see... Uh, San Jose, obviously, West Coast hockey is always fun, especially because they're in the Oilers division. And you want to see good games, so I'd love to see. Um, I'd love to see that kind of turn around a little bit for San Jose. Obviously, not playoff contention, but turn around to a degree where it's at least a little bit more competitive wouldn't be a bad thing. So, uh, Tough Cuff, welcome into the stream. I'm glad to have you along for the uh, ride here this evening, and Ace, you as well, as we get. Uh, um, well, to the point here where we should be closing up shop and getting to the broadcast feed for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. Instead, we're waiting on the Detroit Red Wings and the Montreal Canadiens to finish off what could end up being a thriller here at Little Caesars Arena with 5.27 to go in this third period. So we're going to be late starting here tonight, but that's fine and dandy. We'll get going here at some point and we'll be ready to rock and uh, roll at some point in this evening's adventure friends as the Oilers and obviously Red Wings just kind of both in situations where every point is critical obviously for the Oilers I don't know how much to some degree it really matters but uh, for the Red Wings every point absolutely critical here down the stretch I think if they lose they're eliminated from playoff contention so they gotta they gotta figure out a way to win this one here or they could be in much danger and that's a Terrible turnover right in front. Thankfully, poked away by the Detroit goaltender. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how this one shakes out and how the end of the season out east shakes out because you know everything out uh, west is settled. So it's going to be uh, going to be an interesting finish into this hockey game, I guess you could say. But friends, um, I'm going to tell you, lack of energy here on the stream to start is. Um, is a little bit uh, concerning, so give me a moment here. I'm gonna quickly run upstairs, throw you on the uh, subscribe to Dolany TV ad, and just quickly go.
grab a little bite as I'm feeling a little peckish and I'd like to get that uh, taken care of and so too are the cats by the sounds of it so give me a moment here. My apologies, everybody. Detroit has just scored to tie 4-4 with an empty net. There you have it, drama in the Motor City. But uh, as um, as I was just saying, my apologies is uh, kind of just a little peckish there. I thought a uh, I thought a burrito would be enough to do the trick on the way home, but clearly 7:30 rolls around, start moving the mouth, and all of a sudden the mouth gets a little bit of hunger and the stomach to think the same thing. So. Just a little something, something to eat up there, and we're back, ready to go for this stream. So we're about set for uh, the Oilers and San Jose Sharks, but I assume we'll stay with the Montreal Canadiens first, and probably have a delayed start to the Edmonton Oilers game tonight. As the uh, Detroit Red Wings, what a finish to the season! Lucas Raymond, the uh, the hero in this one. And give me a second, I think I think I might have goofed up. Could hear uh, rumbling around up there. The uh, dog kind of figured out uh, where I stored my little bit of snacks there. So uh, apologies again there, friends. But Kevin, welcome aboard. And uh, we are rolling along into what is going to be a, a good finish to this Red Wings and Canadians game. The Canadians obviously want to try and end the Red Wings season right here in the regulation. But they're going to be hard-pressed to do it as Cole Caulfield down the right wing there shoots it right in front but can't get it through. And uh, Montreal's pressure in here, so see what happens. But I think the Edmonton Oilers are going to have to wait a little while for this game to get settled here this evening between Detroit and Montreal, as both teams obviously uh, here uh, 
taking their time, I guess you could say. So, uh, Kyle, welcome aboard, and uh, Magic, welcome aboard as well. Art missed you there earlier, but time has run out in regulation. The Detroit Red Wings pumped up here to be going overtime with a chance to keep their season alive as Lucas Raymond can't fully believe it. So that was a huge goal and he is going to be an absolute beauty for the Detroit Red Wings for a long, long time. As I think uh, we should have an official announcement here over on social media somewhere. Lucas Raymond's 30th this year has brought Detroit even with Montreal. Um, 5v5 points last 14 games, Matthias Ekholm right there. So, um, do, 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 do. don't think there's anything else we really need to worry about. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I think we are rolling along. The Oilers Nation crew taking in the game tonight. And uh, I don't think there's anything else really we need to worry about. So, I think we're, uh, yeah, I think we're. Good to go, friends. I think we're set up for this Oilers game here in a few um, few moments as Connor McDavid's obviously in the lineup for this one. Peter mentioning the 100 assists there for Kutrov sitting on 99. So too is Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers need to find a way to get this uh, job done for Connor tonight who will likely sit the next two games of the season. So interesting to see where it... Uh, goes from here for the Oilers and of course Connor McDavid so we're about set up for overtime here between uh, between the Oilers and or sorry between the Red Wings and Canadians with the Oilers waiting in the wings to get things started this evening as Little Caesars Arena is absolutely just pumping the uh, audio here inside the rink as they are uh, getting set up for what's going to be a special finish to this hockey game, especially if Detroit wins. Obviously, the Capitals beating Boston 2 0 is a big, big game. And now Detroit needs it, the win to keep pace and then hope for all the best scenarios here in game 82 of the season. So, see what happens. Is we're about to have an interesting. Uh, Finish that much is for sure as Anderson, Matheson, and Evans are on the ice to start overtime for Montreal. Raymond, Gostaspare, and Larkin on the ice to start overtime for Detroit. So I think you know where that looks like uh, a matchup advantage anyway. But I think Montreal trying their best to throw out the checkers and keep the puck in possession. And here's Matheson getting things going for him. So see what happens here. Everything kind of waiting in the balance now for Detroit is... Both teams, um, both teams trying to get this job done here. Is Montreal's got possession. I'm a little nervous here, knowing what this means to my friend back at work there. I know he's probably sitting here yelling, swearing at the TV, having a good old time tonight. And uh, it's been interesting so far. So let's see what uh, the Edmonton Oilers and Detroit Red Wings can muster up here this evening. So. That'll be uh, an opportunity here. Sorry, just taking an opportunity to check something over as we are good to go. So there it is. Good, good, good. Detroit keeps it. Oh, what a save by Montembeau there. And uh, are they saying that crossed the line? Or I'm not sure what they're saying there. It was a good opportunity for Larkin down the wing and just tried tucking it through Montembeau, but the puck was right under his inside left knee there. So... Good save, but friends, we are delayed waiting for this Edmonton Oilers game, obviously, to get underway on Sportsnet. We're a minute 04 officially into the hockey game, so it's all good. It uh, looks like Connor McDavid has scored a goal. Darnell Nurse gets the assist, so Connor scores instead of getting the assist. We'll have to watch the replay on that one, but uh, my apologies. He came for the Edmonton Oilers party, and I can't even watch it on Sportsnet tonight as they're delayed getting this one going, and I actually... At this point, we'd much rather see Detroit's game finish up before we get things fired up here this evening. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at right now, friends. Just trying to get this one solved here. Is yeah, it's been a been an interesting start. I don't know. Uh, I know they uh, did this during the playoffs as well to some degree. So, kind of tough in that 
fashion is we're just waiting for this uh, Sportsnet West feed to flip over. They haven't even told us what uh, channel it is on on Sportsnet Plus right now. If it's not on, um, if it's not on Sportsnet West, so my apologies there, friends. We will get to the Oilers game here in a matter of moments. I promise you that. Keep our tabs and eyes peeled on it as the Oilers have two shots so far. Uh, Edmonton's up one nothing. Just a buck fifty into the hockey game. Obviously, Connor McDavid from Darnell Nurse early on in this one, so you like to see that right there. And uh, Dylan Holloway credited with a hit as well, so good to see. Good to see. As we'll have the face off inside the Canadian zone here. We're just waiting for this Detroit and Montreal game to finish up. They haven't quite shown where the Oilers game can be found at yet, so figure that out and then uh, go from there. And of course, with Sportsnet Plus, it's not as easy as channel flipping. On a regular old TV, so see what happens here. Is uh, ooh, what a shot bar note! That's a tough break there for Detroit, but uh, yeah, that's where we find ourselves, friends. It's Connor McDavid and uh, Darnell Nurse hooking up for the first goal of the hockey game. So big, uh, big start for the Oilers. One nothing last we checked, and I assume right now it stays one nothing as well. So. See if uh, see if Detroit can end this and send us on to the Edmonton game here right right away, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen quite yet. As Patrick Kane tries to drag into the uh, net and he's hauled down instead. So Montreal now trying to respond with Slavkovsky and new hook out there, but obviously I think Detroit's probably going to try and push this one here and really go out there and win this hockey game before overtime runs out. But, yeah, I don't know, friends, this is uh, kind of a new experience, to be honest with you, and it's not very often that uh, we don't get to watch the broadcast feed of the Edmonton Oilers game right out of the gate, but uh, we'll survive here and hopefully see everything come to fruition here in a little bit as they are really letting them play on here in overtime between Detroit and Montreal. They want the guys on the ice to settle it 5-4 somewhere, so... See what happens here as Debrinkat's into the offensive zone. He's going to fire the shot up over top of the net. See, it's hard to get excited for another team, I find, just overall. I mean, if I'm doing actual hockey that I'm there to do, maybe a different story. But this one, uh, this one a little bit more difficult, I think. So we'll see what happens on this overtime period with a buck 15 to go. I really don't think we're going to solve much at all anything, I don't think, because... If you're just tuning in, friends, Sportsnet Plus doesn't want to show the feed to the Oilers game quite yet, so we're still watching Montreal-Detroit at least for the next little while until they find uh, find a goal scorer in this hockey game. So that's where we're kind of having a little bit of a struggle here right now for both teams to solve it. Is yeah, Both teams are just rolling around, getting their chances, not really solving much of anything as of yet. So... We're already through four and a half minutes of this overtime period and it's solved nothing for either team and that's where it's cause for concern because obviously that means possibly a shootout but it looks like maybe there's a breakaway to be had here for Detroit. Maybe Lucas Raymond to win this one right here. Scores! Just like that, you knew it was coming. Lucas Raymond, his 31st of the season, keeps pace with the Capitals in the Eastern Conference, the Detroit Red Wings. We'll live to see another day go into game 82 with everything on the line. What a game for Detroit by the looks of it coming back from 4-2 all the way to 5-4. And uh, <laughs> what a night. That's a huge victory for Detroit. What an unreal finish to that one. So, friends, we should be flipping over to the Edmonton Oilers game here right away. Adam Henrique has just scored thanks to Brett Kulak. 2-0 for the Edmonton Oilers. Four minutes into a hockey game. You should, you should maybe just watch, uh, let me watch the scoreboard for the Oilers. Don't even, don't even worry about uh, watching the game, Tice. Just watch the scoreboard and the Oilers will win and score lots of goals. That seems to be the way it goes some nights. So, 
Seems to be another one of those nights. You watch, as soon as I get call in the play-by-play -play here in a matter of moments, the Oilers will give up a goal guaranteed. I can almost tell you that one 100%. So Detroit obviously went in to secure another victory. Is That's a huge one for them. And now they'll see what they can do with it going into game number 82 of the season. That is about as big of a win as you're going to get in Detroit's past several years, to be honest with you. It's been a rough couple of years, but Detroit came through with a huge, huge victory right there. There's a lot of fans in the building that just can't believe that the team pulled it through. So we go from Monday Night Hockey over to the Edmonton Oilers feed here in a matter of moments, joining it in progress, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll for what should be a good rest of the night here. The Edmonton Oilers set up for... 2-0 uh, victory right now at bare minimum. Connor McDavid's got a goal. Adam Henrique's got a goal. He's got, what, four as an Edmonton Oiler now already? That's uh, starting to pile up here for Henrique, and hopefully the best is yet to come. As the Oilers are inside the offensive zone, back to the blue line, near side over to Cody CC. CC back to the point for Nurse. The shot fired through traffic, goes wide. Cooley's in net for San Jose. Stuart Skinner in net for the Edmonton Oilers. That won't be a nice and call against the San Jose Sharks, and the Oilers up the left wing inside their own zone back down to darnell nurse in or around that goal line area cc up the boards chipped off the stick of perry and it comes back into the edmonton Oilers end san jose giving chase they're still without a shot in this hockey game by the way the Oilers out shooting them five nothing just five and a half into this first period of play as the edmonton Oilers looking to uh, get this one back to the blue line and they will do it all the way drag weight to cooley down inside the san jose zone 14.06 to go here in the first period of play. Friends, welcome aboard Dolan TV as we've got the call now of this Edmonton Oilers hockey game at long last. Stuart Skinner wrote to play the puck. It goes in behind for Matthias Janmark up along the wall, tipped along again, pass to San Jose Shark, back off the skates at home, back to the blue line. The Sharks pump on their first shot of the game and it comes to the near side, back in behind to the near side, picked up by the Sharks again. They get their second shot of the game. 13.38 to go as Stuart Skinner will cover up in a 2-0 lead. So there you have it. And uh, there you have it. The Detroit Red Wings take home a... Um, ooh, <coughs> a huge victory. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, yeah... See, uh, see him now. Uh, what shakes out in that game 82? Oh my goodness, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to breathe. Kay Ferg, welcome aboard. Daniel, welcome aboard as well. Kyle, you're asking about where to watch the game for free. I think nowadays there ain't many options, and in terms of things, I ain't gonna advocate for any illegal streaming, so that is where it's at. Oh, need the water to wash that down. Scott, welcome aboard, and uh. Yikes, that was, a, that was a tough goal right there. But friends, we are obviously inside an Edmonton Oilers 2-0 lead over top of the San Jose Sharks here early on in this hockey game. And like I said, I don't know how much longer I'm going to last tonight. I kind of plan on at least getting the full first period up and underway, but we'll obviously see what the Edmonton Oilers have in store for us tonight. I wanted to make sure I was at least live for a little bit tonight. That was number one. Uh, goal for the evening was just to be live at least for some bit and part of tonight's hockey game and then see where the night takes us. But I am definitely struggling following a uh, late night last night. It was a long uh, long night. Like I said, the weather outside, I don't know if it was the wind coming into town or what it was, just kind of set the sleep off. And at one point woke up and it was just not uh, not feeling so hot. So Connor McDavid scoring the first goal of the hockey game. It looks like... Uh, Adam Henrique as well scored a goal on a uh, bounce off himself that he pa puts past Cooley. So McDavid and Henrique out there with the first two goals of the game for the Edmonton Oilers to begin this one. As we're about set for the face off to the right of Stuart Skinner. 13.38 to go in this first period of play. 5-1 the shots for the Oilers. So uh, concern about them not coming to play against the Sharks tonight. Not too wor worrying now as the Oilers hold what I think against the San Jose Sharks at least is a commanding 2 nothing lead. Is this one into the near side corner? Picked up by Drysdale, knocked off his stick by the Sharks. 
around the far side as the Oilers try to keep this alive inside the offensive zone. Back to the blue line. Bouchard taps it. It's offside. The Oilers have to skate to it. And the San Jose Sharks try to jam it in. Instead, turned back by Leon Dreisettel. Dreisettel will flip down low. Batted around the boards by Nugent Hopkins. Back to the blue line. Picked up by Ekholm. Tapping it back down low off the end wall. Comes to the near side for Cooley, who off the end wall will pick it up and cover it up. So, there you have it. So, uh, Tom, can I last 15 minutes? Oh, I think we got more than 15 minutes to go in this first period. I can guarantee that run right now. So, um, we'll see where we go. But, uh, highest draft picks in franchise history Pat Falloon, Andre Zuzin, uh, obviously Patrick Marlowe, Mark Reichi, and uh, Brad Stewart as well. Hmm, Brad Stewart. As this one uh, will be a face off. To the left of Cooley, one back by the Sharks. As uh, this will go up into the Oilers' neutral territory possession. Picked up by Henrik. Henrik across the line. He'll get back down low. Now picked up by whoever that was. That got stapled into the boards like that. Was that Hyman? Did Hyman get stapled in? It's actually, ooh, they've got the lines all kind of jostled up here tonight. Hyman, McDavid, and Henrique is the top line this evening. So you like to see it there. They're giving Henrique a little bit of elevated time here to close out the season, get those shooting hands feeling good as this one's picked up by McDavid. Back to the blue line for Kulak. Kulak over. The pressure is on to find somebody to pass to or get back to McDavid. This one back to the far side boards inside the San Jose zone. That's the other side too. I got to readjust. To watching hockey with the glasses on. You haven't seen me with glasses in a long while. Well, finally picked up the new pair, and away we go. As here's CeCe across the line. CeCe drifts this up off the end wall. McDavid's flying out there. Back to the blue line. Shot fired up off the end wall. Picked up again by the Oilers. Back to Cody CeCe. CeCe down low, up in behind it goes to the near side. Picked up by. McLeod now of CC at the top point. Shot fired off the end wall. Goes off the back of the net. Perry dumps around the far side boards. Picked up by Nurse. Shot fired towards. And it fools Dylan Holloway on the way through traffic. And be chipped up off the boards back into the Oilers zone. So there you have it. The Oilers getting things. Uh, the pressure kind of ratcheted up here on San Jose. This one's flipped back into San Jose's zone. Lands to the left to Cooley. And it's picked up by Perry after a bad play by San Jose right down Main Street. Ryan McLeod tipped right in front for Holloway. Couldn't bury it on the double tap. This one's now Perry in behind the net. Perry looking to come out right in front with it. Couldn't find support there from anyone as McLeod was staying to the middle outside on the far side. And it's fired back in by the San Jose Sharks. Picked up now by the Oilers along the near side wall. It's now in behind the net. Evan Bouchard or is that Cody Cece? I think that was still Cece. As Connor Brown wheels and deals up the right wing, Connor Brown around the defense there of San Jose, spinning and around. I mean, Connor Brown's wheeling out there. Here's Bouchard now to Ekholm. Ekholm down low, tapped off the pads of Cooley, and again tapped off the shin pads of somebody in front. 10:26 to go here, as the Oilers will see the San Jose Sharks enter their zone and tap it back down low in behind the net. As that's uh, Nico Sturm in behind the net there and. Connor Brown will have the puck after the Oilers stole it back. Tap it back to center ice. And this one will be stolen by Sam Carrick, who will lift in. Just kind of butterfly float it into that near side corner for Thrun. Thrun up the boards here now for, uh, I don't even know who any of these San Jose guys are. To be honest with you, I couldn't tell you. I'm going to try and guess, and that's about as far as we're going to go. As This is going to be Leon Dreisel lumbering up the right wing. Here's Nugent Hopkins back to Kulak. And it came back to him for a brief moment, but just couldn't quite get it through. And here's Dayarnay near side trying to pick this one up along the wall. Can't do it. Down the near side wall as Fogel will push that one in the front. The Oilers tap it out to the middle of the ice. It's San Jose here. Blocked in front again. San Jose is going to try and force this one across. Dreisel wins the battle to the puck. Tapped ahead, and here comes Fogel right down Main Street with Nugent Hopkins. Five hole scores! Just like that, for the Edmonton Oilers, a 3-0 lead against the San Jose Sharks with 9.20 to go in the first period on Fan Appreciation Night. This is a night that I'm bummed to be missing. Of course, if it was on a Thursday or Friday, I can guarantee you 
I'd be there in Edmonton this evening, but instead we got a situation where it's uh, Monday night and maybe I should have just booked the Monday, Tuesday off and gone up for a, for a trip, but that's fine. Got to stop, um, got to stop spending money on Oilers tickets right now if I want to go out there and enjoy the playoffs, that's for sure. So we're going to see this one uh, off the face off to the near side boards, friends. And here's the crazy thing. I'll tell you when Connor McDavid scores a assist 100. In terms of the play-by-play, -play, we got plenty of that coming up here in a little bit. Uh, you guys are pretty ch talkative here in the chat tonight, so I want to get to a couple of chats. As I think uh, Scott mentioned earlier, what happened to the BioSteel kick earlier on in the live streams last year, especially during the playoffs. Friends, I'll tell you, BioSteel went bankrupt. Happens to the best of them. What do you do? So uh, I'm not getting on that body armor kick. That stuff's disgusting, to be honest with you. It's really terrible. So uh, that you won't see from me, but um, we'll be on the waters all playoffs. I might end up actually switching back to the enemy, the old Gatorade here at some point. Uh, we, I've, I've been liking the Gatorade fits, but we'll see how that works uh, when they get warm in the summertime. Is, that is where we're at. So... Um, Kay Ferg as well asking about the playoff beard. Yeah, so this is officially the starting point of the playoff beard. I trimmed it down on the sides today. I'm going to try and let the uh, beard kind of come out this way a little bit instead of going out like it did last year. So we'll see how that uh, takes things for the uh, playoffs as we'll try and style it up and really make something of it, I think. But in terms of this Edmonton Oilers game, uh, Bouchard's got the puck back to the point. It's going to go over to Ekholm. Well, let's get it back to Bouchard. High point, far side now for McLeod. Ekholm tries to wire home. The one-timer couldn't quite do it. 7.47 to go here in this first period of play. The Oilers rolling around in behind the net. Bouchard's going to push it back now to Perry. Perry along the boards. Tried to clap it onto the stick of McLeod. Couldn't quite get it fully through. Seven and a half minutes to go here in this th first period of play third period I wish already but it's a 3-0 lead for the Edmonton Oilers. Stuart Skinner grabs out with the glove as it'll be Ekholm now with the puck here for the Oilers. Ekholm to the far side boards up off the wall tipped up out of play. That was 7-16 to go. We'll have a stoppage in play here this evening. So um, Dean, uh, Connor McDavid's goal, game winning goal very well could be this evening for the Oilers. The way the San Jose Sharks have looked and obviously the first few saves from Stuart Skinner have looked pretty impressive thus far, so I assume we could be in uh, could be in for a situation here uh, this evening. And Nicholas, uh, one day I'll have to explain my Oilers fandom and my residence down south. Well, I'll tell you, that one's pretty easy to explain. Born and raised Cold Lake, Alberta, that's the heart of oil country. Everybody knows that. And then as well, um, basically from there, it's... Uh, from there, it's one of those things is not much work for a guy like me who's into broadcasting up in Cold Lake, decided to come down to Southern Alberta, try and find a different career field, did that, and that's why I'm stuck down here is I quite enjoy my job uh, day in, day out, obviously, right? Keep showing up for some reason, so obviously I must like it, but it's good, so we'll see what uh, what continues on as this Evans and Oilers fandom uh, is Growing year by year, I think, too, especially kind of reinvigorating it there with the 22 playoffs, Ben Stelter, Stelter and that whole uh, that whole run as well. So, uh, yeah, no, I think we've been treated some pretty good hockey here the past three years as well, and we're looking forward to going on another run yet again this year. So, we'll see... Uh, We'll see where we go here, friends. Is um, lots of Edmonton Oilers fans in the stands here tonight, and uh, yes, that indeed as well. The uh, Canadians women's national team winning the uh, well, winning the gold medal at the IHF Worlds yesterday. That was a pretty big uh, event, obviously. So. Awesome to see and. Now, friends, let's get back to hockey here. The uh, fill-in time on the air here comes to an end as the puck's back into the San Jose zone. I literally got nothing in me here tonight for some reason. It was a hard finish to work. It went by fast today, but that last 4, four to 4.30, it was, uh, it was interesting as this one comes back 
in behind the Edmonton Oilers net. San Jose trying to fire a shot towards the net. Goes off the end wall of the far side. 6.53 to go here in this first period. Jammed off the pads of Stuart Skinner. Picked up now by Brett Kulak. Kulak trying to get this one up through the middle as it'll be picked up now by Connor Brown. Down the right wing. Brown across the line. He's going to fire a shot towards the net. It's blocked in front. Carrick's able to get it back to it. And here's Darnay in the middle of the ice. Back to the blue line situation as Yanmark's going to wheel and deal around the top of the zone now. San Jose doing a good job keeping the Oilers' fourth line to the outside, but the Oilers' fourth line driving up possession here in uh, here in this hockey game. So this is going to be cut off again by the Oilers, man. San Jose is some level of terrible, I must say. 6.08 to go. It's Cody Cece up along the wall. Far side pass over to Nugent Hopkins. Nuge down the left wing. Denied. There was 6.01 to go in the first period of play. Fogel fires a shot. It's up over top of the net. No to play with 5.56 to go in this first period of play. Friends, we continue to roll along here on the stream this evening. Thank you so much for being aboard here on Dolomy TV. I know it's a little bit of a different stream just based on what you're used to, but the discombobulated start to the stream and obviously for the Oilers as well. Um... Just a 3 nothing game, a meaningless game against San Jose that, yeah, you win. There may be some hope for first, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Probably not. So what I'll say as well, friends, if you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolan TV. That's just my little self-ad for myself. I will throw you an ad here as well quickly, and then we'll go from there. As we've already been live for 46 minutes. That doesn't seem like it. I, do, I did take a break to go eat, so. Well, I guess I could say the Oilers, um, the others, uh, or sorry, the dog ate more than I did out of my snacks upstairs. So, William, welcome aboard. Bob, welcome in as well. So, we're rolling a 3 nothing lead right now for the Edmonton Oilers. Things are looking not half bad. I can honestly say that for a game that I've live streamed. Obviously, we're used to some games not being the greatest, but this one's going according to plan thus far. Hopefully, for the Oilers, it keeps going according to plan the rest of the way home here. So uh, we're rolling along here this evening, friends, and it looks like uh, things are really going to happen for them tonight. And obviously that uh, with 3 nothing lead uh, keeps things alive for the time being. As Charlie Lindgren's 16-save shutout as Washington beats Boston. 16-save shutout to beat Boston. That's insane. Florida coach Paul Marie said tomorrow's lineup versus Toronto would depend on this game. Panthers... Can still win the Atlantic so uh, there you have it I think that's going to tell you all you need to know is they've got uh, the Oilers um, Oilers rig right here out front is you're gonna see lots of Oilers fandom uh, lots of Oilers fandom get going here in a little bit round one playoff tickets are on sale Tuesday April 16th at 10 a.m. Well, just like that friends we're gonna know our dates tomorrow as uh, the first round should be announced at that point. So, you'd like to see that. It's 5.45 to go here in this first period of play. As it comes along the wall, picked up now by Fogel. Fogel's trying to figure this one over the corner. There's Nugent Hopkins to an open wing, picked up by Nurse, who's already got an assist in this, uh, in this first period of hockey on Connor McDavid's first goal of the game which gave us that one nothing lead just shortly into this hockey game. I mean, the Oilers did not really waste any time getting into this hockey game this evening. So we'll obviously see what the Oilers have in store for us the rest of the way home here, friends. I don't want to really shut off the stream. I'll probably hang out a little bit in the intermission to some degree. But uh, who, do we, uh, who do we face in the first round? This might be a good question there, Tom. The question, I think the answer is... Uh, LA. I think Vegas still could make a push for it. That's true. But I think LA is definitely the answer at this current moment. And of course, LA would probably, for the Oilers, based on the past two times, secure a playoff series win just the way it's uh, kind of gone the past two years and obviously how it went in the regular season. Stuart Skinner with a big save. That's the fourth shot of the game. 16 minutes in for the San Jose Sharks. As the big part now for the Edmonton Oilers is just avoiding injury the rest of the way home. As Hyman's drawn a penalty, or has he taken a penalty? I think Hyman just took a high sticking call. So 4.59 to go in this first period. Hyman's going to head to the box for the Edmonton Oilers here. So 
Interesting to see, interesting to see, 459. So you got just a little bit left as, uh, how, yeah, Hyman caught him. Hyman caught the run. That's tough, that's tough. Mr. Doom, welcome aboard. Nick as well, missed you there a moment ago. And uh, Andrew walked me in, so. Um, here we go, high sticking for Hyman. 15.01 to go, or 15.01 gone in this first period before the penalty. Some fans hanging out in behind the Edmonton Oilers penalty box here. They got the buckets on. You like to see it. 79.7% ranked penalty kill this uh, season. That's tied for 13th in the NHL. That's pretty good numbers, actually. And I think against San Jose tonight, you should be able to boost those numbers up a few points, maybe 79.9, and uh, get into that top 12 area. 40, 440 to go here in the first period of play. 9-4. The shots on goal for the Edmonton Oilers now officially eight for the shots on goal. So tough to see the Oilers lose a shot there, but is what it is. With a buck thirty to go in the San Jose penalty, back to the high point, near side now picked up by San Jose. He tapped uh, down low into that near side corner, and the uh, San Jose power play was only uh, 0 for three against the last team they faced. So that's not good, but. Uh, this one comes back outside of the San Jose zone. The faceoff will be inside the Oilers' end with buck ten to go in the power play. And I, 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 guy is fading past here. I'm going to need a good crash tonight. I'll tell you that much. As it is eight o'clock, I guess. Trina, welcome aboard. And we are just about uh, we're about set to get things going. The officials talking it over one more time here to make sure there was no uh, penalty on the play. They say it was ruled a touch there by uh, Darnay, and I don't know about that one. I think it might have rolled off the stick of a San Jose shark, but it was a good shot. It didn't touch anything. That angle's not going to show us anything either. Yeah, that's tough. So, Morgan, welcome aboard as well. Cheering for Darnay and Holloway. Those are two pretty, uh, pretty good guys to cheer for. I can agree with that. 409 to go in this first period of play, friends, with a buck 10 to go in the San Jose power play. Shot fired down the ice and not cleared out by the Oilers. In fact, actually it did. The linesman ruled that it was cleared, so we will have a stoppage in play with a buck 04 to go in the San Jose power play. It's the power play that won't end now for the Edmonton Oilers. They are looking to try and kill this one off, and they just can't, uh, can't seem to get this one done here because the uh, puck keeps being blown dead. As Brown's going to take the face off for the Oilers, it'll be one back by San Jose. San Jose up through the middle of the ice will fire into the Oilers' end down the right wing. Picked up there by San Jose off the dump, and they're going to get to the middle of the ice. Fought off by Stuart Skinner. A good one right there, and you like to see that. That was a good hard shoulder into the puck. That really gives you a little bit of confidence there that Skinner's going to try his best to try and help us out here this evening. So... Um, let me go here and check this out for a brief moment as we are approaching 50 hours on the stream, friends. So we have actually had a pretty good solid stream all told as this one, uh, this one is going to be interesting here as this one will be a face off to the near side picked up by the Oilers going up off the boards and now CC will fire it up along the wall over to Carrick. Carrick up the middle, looking to get this pass across again through the middle. He is, yeah, I got it there, but it missed everybody shorthanded. So this one will come back now for CC. CC looking to make the play up the ice here on the penalty kill with 29 seconds to go. 326 remaining in the first period. Terrible giveaway right in front there by the Edmonton Oilers. Rick, welcome aboard as well. And we continue to see everybody tuning in here this evening as we're up to 86 of you aboard for the ride here as we wind down this first period. 10 seconds to go in the power play for the San Jose Sharks. 3.06 to go in the first period overall as the Oilers to the near side picked up now by Fogel. Fogel will come up the right wing and look to get across the line. Fire the shot up over top of Cooley. A 90 mile an hour shot off the wrister there for Fogel. My goodness, you like to see that. As this one will come back to the near side as the Oilers done penalty kill him back to the point now. Drysdale backhands over to CeCe. CeCe back over. We'll leave it there for McLeod. Down low to Hyman. McDavid uh, somewhere on the ice maybe? I don't know. I don't think so as they're trying to get him out there. Backhand pass over to McDavid. That was a heck of a play there 
by Drysdale to get it over to McDavid. And here's Drysdale driving to the middle, looking for Hyman. You knew he was going to do it, especially after McDavid had had the second passes. Here's Bouchard over to Drysdale, and that was the one timer to give McDavid 100, but couldn't quite get it going. And uh, we've gone to commercial break in the middle of this one. Um, okay, I don't know what just happened on the Sportsnet Plus stream. Um, interesting, interesting as this one comes back in front. The others are still wheeling and dealing here. They got the audio for the, wow, okay, this is, this is all kinds of discombobulated here from Sportsnet tonight. This one's in behind the San Jose net. McDavid trying to poke that one away. Comes past him there. And that was a little bit of a uh, little bit of a wild go there, I guess you could say, as this one's going to come back now in the middle of the ice there for Ekholm. Ekholm across. Can't get that job done with Buck 15 to go in this first period of play. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was rough there for uh, Sportsnet, that's for sure. So, this one across the line for the Oilers now as Holloway's on the ice alongside Henrik and Perry. Perry backhanding this one to CeCe. CeCe will go down low to Holloway. Holloway looking around the far side corner and looking right in front for Perry. Hops off of somebody in front, just couldn't get it through quite cleanly. And I think at the same rate I need to clean my glasses. Here's another shot there from Henrik. And I'm, uh, I'm telling you, Henrik is feeling it. Tonight, based on what we've seen out of him again down the right wing, leaving it off there for Perry. Perry back off the end wall now to Henry. And there's Holloway. So the audio is now all messed up on the stream as well, but Dylan Holloway gets his fifth of the season. Just like that, I was trying to figure out what happened, but Dylan Holloway scores the fourth goal of the game for the Edmonton Oilers. We got, uh, we got mass chaos here for <laughs> The Sportsnet stream, but for the Oilers tonight, obviously a big victory here in store as they are up 4 nothing over top of the San Jose Sharks and friends. I ain't got her tonight, I'll tell you that much, but Dylan Holloway and Adam Henrique do. That's Henrique's second point of the night, and that's Dylan Holloway's second goal in a few games here as he's starting to feel it right in front. That's a gimme tap-in, so there you have it. This one comes down low. 21 seconds to go. Dylan Holloway with his fifth of the season from Henrique. And Nurse, who picks up another assist here. So good for Nurse. Piling up the points here late at the end of the year. You like to see that. Definitely kind of one of those things you want to see towards the contract. As this one is Dayarnay looking down low for Sam Carrick. Time will run out in the first period of play, friends. That was a messy one. A from Sportsnet. B uh, from the San Jose Sharks, but not... From the Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid's got something to get going here in this later stages of this hockey game. But friends, for right now, I'm Tyson the Stall on the TV. I am uh, going to go lay down in bed and uh, put the Oilers game on and try and not fall asleep before Connor McDavid scores his 100th assist of the season. Friends, thanks so much for being aboard here this evening. I know I'm going on short notice, but uh, I do appreciate you hanging out with me here this evening, the Oilers. Obviously find a way to win um, this hockey game, I think, by all measures. 4 nothing after the first against the uh, San Jose Sharks is going to win you the hockey game. One at least imagine, and uh, we'll see what happens, friends, as I'll be cheering alongside you. Mostly laying up in bed, probably, as I am up on. All right, out of here. Thanks for being aboard, friends.